Today what we're going over are common problems with the attic fan and with the thermostat that turns the attic fan on. And we're going to be going over troubleshooting tips to allow you to quickly diagnose the problem. To adjust the thermostat we just use a screwdriver and you leave this cover on and we typically set these at 90 degrees. First things first we want to determine if we have power to the thermostat. We can use a non-contact voltage sensor such as this and place it near the wire. So that tells you that we do have power. Let's go ahead and turn it off. We don't normally have a switch this close. Now we don't have power. So we're going to take this cover off and we're going to also measure for voltage at the wire nuts before we continue. So we have these two wire nuts for the incoming power wire and then you have this wire nut right here, this black wire and that is the wire that you're switching, the hot wire between here and here. So the common is connected directly to the fan, but we're gonna measure for voltage just to make sure that we don't have any right now. You see that we're reading zero volts. Okay, so now at this point, I'm gonna go over to the attic fan and we wanna go ahead and push the, the fan blade and see if the fan is seized. We didn't wanna do that until we confirmed that we had no power over here. The most common problem with the attic fan is that the bearings get seized and that's just due to the weather here and you can see that the the blade right here doesn't want to move and that's due to these sealed bearings inside of this this motor right here there's no way to oil these sealed bearings so we know that this attic fan needs to be replaced we know that right off the bat we don't want to try to put oil in there we don't want to try to spin it until it frees up we just need to replace this but say that this did spin fine now we need to go back over to here to continue the diagnosis Next, we're gonna turn the power on and then we're gonna work with the switch right here, which is the, the thermostat. We would normally have this set at 90 degrees, like on this cover right here. It's right at 90. So inside the building, you're typically gonna have it around 70, 75. And so up here, you would want this fan running uh, anytime it's above 90 degrees. And so you would adjust this accordingly, but first we're gonna turn the power on and we're gonna test with our multimeter. We'll put one probe in the common and we're gonna put one probe into this hot. We're gonna see if we have any voltage. So we're gonna turn it down to a lower temperature. Now we see that we have 120 volts. So if we were to turn this back up again, you see that the switch is working properly. And so, let's see. Right about here is where it's turning the fan on. So if we were to put the cover back on, let's turn the power off for a sec, just to be safe. If we were to put this cover back on, we see that it's turning the fan on and it says that it is about 78 degrees up here right now. I have a, a bead temp sensor and it says that we're at 78, 79 degrees. So that's how you can tell it's gonna switch. Uh, Any time that the temperature in the attic is higher than what you set it at on the dial. And so we would normally set that at 90 degrees. We know that this switch is working properly now. Sometimes you have a manual push test so that'll bypass the temperature switch right here just to see if your attic fan is going to run. We're going to move on to our last test and we're just verifying that our power is off right now, which it is. It's off right here at the switch and we verified it with the multimeter. So the next thing that we're going to do is if that motor does spin, we want to see if maybe the windings have opened up. And we can do that by testing the electrical resistance on the hot and common wire leading to the fan. So these two wires are right here. To measure electrical resistance, we're just going to press this. So that is the continuity button. We don't want the beeping noise. We're just going to go to electrical resistance. And we're going to put one clamp on one wire and one clamp on the other wire. And you see that we're reading mega ohm. So that means that the electrical windings have melted and opened up. And that was because that the motor bearings were frozen. So the, the motor windings are bad in this motor. So sometimes even when it free spins, those windings may be bad. So if we did have electrical resistance, um, obviously when you touch these, it should be very close to 0, 0.0 ohms, but you will have some electrical resistance uh, going through that motor. So as you can see, those windings have opened up. So most of the attic fans don't have a capacitor. They're usually a shaded pole motor. So you don't have to worry about a capacitor failing. Remember capacitors fail due to high heat. And right here, these shaded pole motors, when these are mounted 
uh, just like this on the on the gable vent. Sometimes the older ones will have an oil spout that you can put some oil in here and here, uh, but typically the ones that are mounted up here, they have no oiling mechanisms and they're sealed bearings right there. I don't know if you happen to notice during the video, but this attic fan is very close to a ridge vent. So a ridge vent is not supposed to work with any type of mechanical ventilation whatsoever. So it just works with the soffits. So hot air rises. And so the soffits are all the way down over at the, the base of the roof on the side of the building. And then the hot air, it travels upwards and then exits right through the ridge vent. So there's no purpose of having an attic fan right here because it's just gonna draw air from the path of least resistance. So it really doesn't make any sense at all. So it would just draw air from here and pull it right in here. You're supposed to have either gable vents on the sides or soffits to draw from, and then you'd put this in the center of your attic up high. So no sense in even having this here. If you have a gable mounted fan like this, you wanna make sure that this is sealed here and it's sealed from here to the wall. So basically you want it to be ducted over to your gable vent. And this type of gable vent is not even any good anyway. This one's not meant for a gable fan. So it's gonna block and restrict most of the airflow anyway. So you really wanna be particular whenever installing a gable mounted fan. If you wanna learn more about HVAC and electrical troubleshooting and refrigerant charging, make sure you check out our website over at acservicetech.com. We have a bunch of free resources there, such as quizzes, calculators. We've got articles, quick tips, the podcast. Make sure you check all that out. And we also have our refrigerant charting and service procedures for air conditioning book, workbook, and quick reference cards there. We also have our ebook over at our website and on iTunes and Google Play. And we have all of our physical resources, such as our book, our workbook, and quick reference cards over on Amazon. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.